Hey, glad you're with me today on Sharpen. This is Pastor Rick. I want to talk about Isaiah again in one of the great books in the Bible. Maybe you've never been through it, but we're in verse 23 today. And I want to talk about giving up. You know, I want to, show, I want to read something to you that's horrible, right? I'm going to hear this horrible <laughs> summary uh, in chapter 1, verse 18, where he, 23 rather, where he describes where they are. But then I want you to notice how hopeful he is. And so at the end of the day, today, we're going to notice that God doesn't give up. He always offers hope. He wants us to see that there's hope always. So look at what he says in verse 23. Your rulers are rebels, partners with thieves. They all love bribes and chase their gifts. They do not defend the causes of the fatherless. The widow's case does not come before them. Therefore, the Lord, the Almighty, the Mighty One of Israel declares, Ah, I will vent my wrath on my foes and avenge myself on my enemies. I will turn my hands against you. I will thoroughly purge away your trash, dross or trash, and remove all your impurities. <laughs> Verse 26. But then watch what he says. But I will restore your leaders as in the days of old. Your rulers, as in the beginning of afterwards, you will be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Notice, notice how he starts off with an honest summary of where they were. He starts off by saying, your rulers are rebels, partners with thieves. You, you're ignoring the widows. You're not helping the fatherless. You guys are really in a bad spot. He lays out the case. He lays out the reason why. Then he offers a promised solution. This is common throughout the Old Testament where God would say, here's what you're doing, but here's what I want to do. Here's what I'm going to do to you, but here's how I'm going to redeem you. God always has a plan of redemption. And I love this redemptive plan because it says it very clearly. I will restore your leaders. And then he goes on and says, your rulers and the beginning as in the beginning. Afterward, he said, you will be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion will, will be delivered with justice. Her Penitent ones with righteousness, but rebels and sinners with both will both be broken and those who forsake the Lord will perish. You will be ashamed because of the sacred oaks in which you have delighted. There were idols they built around trees and you will be disgraced because of the gardens that you have chosen. You will be like an oak with fading leaves, like a garden with without water. The mighty man will become, look at this now, tender and his work a spark. Both will bring together, watch this now, both will burn together rather with no one to quench the fire. It's, it's, it's a dual message that you have to hear because when you read the Old Testament, one of the things you hear is God speaking to a problem but offering a, a promised solution to those who hear. There's no time in your life that God can't save you. There's no time in Israel's life that God couldn't redeem them. But God made it plain and clear. If you don't change, here is going to be your outcome. That's how I know what's going to happen down the road in our country. See, I, I realize that it's not, it's not just the way I see it. It's the way God sees it. And God looks down and he sees all of it. He sees all of it. He sees the prostitution, but he knows why she's a prostitute. He sees the person who's rebellious, but he knows why. He sees the person who pretends to be righteous, but they're not. He sees the person that uses people. He sees the person that abuses people. He sees it all, and, and, he, and he's speaking to a nation before they're judged. He says, listen, I want to give you guys a warning. I want to give you guys an opportunity to, first of all, hear my warning, but know my heart. God has a plan for your life. God wants to come into your life, and he wants to reach into your life, and he wants to make a difference. This is designed to sharpen your life. This was written to give you a clear path of wholeness. He wants to make you a whole person, not a half. He wants to redeem everything in your life. But it starts with you understanding the boundaries. It starts with you saying, I get it. I understand that I need to stop the slide. I need to understand that you want to forgive me. I need to be the kind of person who embraces the fact that you want me to do something in the world. That's what he said in the first First few chapter verses, rather, of, of Isaiah. He wanted them as a nation to come together. Let me pray for you. Father, let us hear today this message. Let us hear the message of Isaiah. Let us apply this to our lives. Let us begin, O oh God, to face the truth about us and thank you that there's hope and forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with me. 
Stay sharp. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.